Hi, I'm Gabriel from Baskel. Today I'm really excited to show you our new plugin, AI Relight. You can think of AI Relight as adding a flashlight or a light source to your scene. Um, I made an obviously silly example by rigging a, a flashlight a PNG to the scene, but it just goes to show you that AI Relight understands the 3D properties of a scene or a subject and lets you add virtual light uh, to it. So today we'll be covering the basics. Um, I'll give you some advanced techniques you can use with the plugin. And I'm also going to show you how you can use the plugin for compositing and VFX work. Um, I'm going to apply the effect under Basco and AI Relight. And uh, right away you see that you can, you can see that it added a little bit of red here. And that's because by default, light number one is enabled. Um, I'm going to uh, increase the intensity of light one so you can see a little bit better what it does. And by default, this light, uh, virtual light, is uh, positioned here. And so you can move it and you can see that it follows the shape, the natural shape of um, the image. We can also add a second light, maybe like here. And all of the indiv individual lights have 3D positions. So yes, you can move them like I just did in 2D in the comp, but you can also play on the Z position of each light. So maybe I want something more of a more of a rim light here. So what I'll do is just bring those lights a little bit further in the scene. We can play with the intensity and we can play with the gamma, which controls um, kind of the fall off of the light. We can, of course, change the color of those lights. Let's go for something like that. Just fall off a little bit. And um, if you want to change the output mode, you can see that um, I can change it to light. So you only see what um, the plugin renders and it's easier to see the 3D shape in that case. By default, the quality is set to fast, which is, as you see, pretty fast. Um, you can go even faster, but the shape of the 3D shape of the image will be very low res. Sometimes it's enough, but sometimes you need more precision. So what you can do is increase this um, until you're satisfied. Now, just a warning, when you pass um, balanced, any quality above that, you might, you, you should try it, but maybe your card will not handle it because what it does internally is it changes the internal resolution um, of how the image is calculated. And in my case, I have a 4090, so I can go up to accurate, which will produce a very uh, precise shape like this. You can see the nose and the mouth and everything. Um, if it's not enough for you, you can even go custom. And then this is the resolution. This is like, if I want to put 2048, for example, uh, this is a 2048 pixels by 2048 pixels uh, resolution. And we can go even higher than that. But at some point your GPU card will choke. And uh, then you know that this is your limit and you should, you should stay under. Um, next, I'm going to show you some advanced uh, settings you can use because even if you have a lower end card and you cannot go to the more accurate settings, you can still bring back some details and I'm going to show you that next. Let me show you some advanced techniques you might want to use uh, when working with AI Relight. I have this uh, footage of a statue with a slight traveling forward with the camera here. <laughs> I'm going to add AI Relight to it. And as always, uh, a first light is added bottom left and you see that it has a, a slight red influence on the, on the footage. 
And for this case, I want to simulate something like there's a fire or hell going on at the bottom of the shot or something like that. Um, so let's add another light the bottom here and put it maybe yellow, yellowish. <clears throat> so you get the idea. So first, uh, Kind of a pro move you can do is instead of working with the AI relight affecting your footage, what I suggest you do is duplicate your footage and on this first one here, which is the original, we're going to get rid of AI relight. Look at the second one and change the output mode to light. This way we only output the lights and change the blending mode of the layer to either add or screen, whichever looks best for you. This way, a few things. First, we can play with the opacity of the whole layer and not um, having to mess around with the intensity of individual lights. But also in this case, I'd like to bring down um, the brightness of the underlying shot just a bit. So by doing that, I'm just affecting the first layer, second layer uh, only has the lights, so it's much more convenient to work with. Then I want to talk about a little more in depth um, about the, the quality setting. So let me solo this layer so we see what I'm talking about. Um, obviously, the quality setting would define how much detail uh, there is in the render, but accurate setting might not be available for your card and also is very render intensive um, if uh, it's available. But you see that it brings back more of the hair details and small details on the, on the sculpture. Um, but I want to show you a way to bring back those details uh, even with a balanced setting here. And to do that, we're going to duplicate again this layer, so maybe this one we can we can call it uh, relight. So let's duplicate it again and call that um, details. We're going to remove AI relight, so we're back. We are back with the original shot. Let's change the uh, blending mode to normal, so it's just a copy of the original shot without any color correction. And what we want to do on this one is add color correction levels. And we can prep it a little bit here. Uh, what we want is a black and white version of this image, but keeping the details in the in the hair and the hand here, and all of the small detail, details of the, the sculpture here. So let's bring the brightness forward and make it more contrasty. That will be enough for now. Um, we can hide this layer entirely. Um, we can even put it like underneath everything because we don't need to um, to use it in the in the timeline. What we need to do is after AI relight on our layer that only outputs the lights, we're going to add channel and CC composite. And let's select details as the layer and most importantly, select the effect and mask. And the transfer mode, we're going to use multiply. And you see that I'm bringing back, if I turn off the CC composite thing, um, doing that, I'm bringing back some of the lighting information from the original shot, but it's also bringing back, back a lot of details and it helps integrate this new lighting into the original shot. We can play with the opacity because maybe 100% is a little bit too much. Um, we want to still have a little bit of, uh, of glow uh, in between the fingers here. So maybe some somewhere around like 85, 90% will do. Um, <clears throat> in this case, this original shot is uh, very noisy. So I'm going to solo the details layer again. And let's just add, you can denoise it the way you want, but let's let's just add a, a, a Gaussian blur. That'll do for now, just to get rid of this 
a very sharp noise. If I go back to this, um, yeah, we see that we are effectively <clears throat> bringing back some of those details. Uh, and even with a quality output of balance and whether for this shot, if I switch to accurate, even with an accurate setting, uh, it changes the output a little bit, but it's not that much better. So you can stay, you can keep a, a balanced or fast or even faster quality output uh, with this technique of bringing back some of the details and they'll do the job. Okay, now second tip, um, and it has to do with motion. The estimated 3D model is calculated each frame, which means that every new frame, you get a slightly different 3D model of the shot. Now, if I play this back, we see that um, because of the re-rendering of uh, the 3D model, um, there is quite a bit of uh, flickering happening. Um, we are working in some ways to mitigate that, but in the meantime, there is a nice and easy workaround you can do, and which is to add uh, one effect called time CC white time. Um, you, want the, you want to add this effect in between the CC composite and AI Relight if you add a CC composite to bring back the details um, because we don't want the details to be um, averaged out. Um, this is because white time will average do an average of <coughs> the, sh the frames before and after. And somewhere around like two forward step and two backward steps, um, I find that those are good settings. So then when you have your CC white time, you can bring back the details with the CC composite. And if I show you the final result, you can see that this is a lot more consistent frame by frame. But just to give you the idea that you can use AI Relight to animate a still image. So uh, this is a photo of a statue again, um, but obviously it works on portraits and any other scenes. Um, you can add uh, AI Relight, and if I break that down, um, I kind of did the same steps uh, that I've showed you before. Uh, so this is my source layer. This is the AI Relight layer. Um, which, by the way, looks cool also as is. You don't even need um, the source image for it to look cool. Um, but what I've done is animated the lights uh, with some parenting and expressions. I won't go uh, too much uh, in depth about those, but uh, those two nulls that are rotating um, around the, the face. Um, I've just linked this position and this position by expression here to both lights in AI Relight. And I did the same thing with uh, the details. So I have a CC composite that brings back uh, the original image. So uh, you can see that without it, the 3D model is kind of smooth out version of the source image. But with CC composite, we have those details back. And this is the final product. One last thing I want to show you is, or rather make you think about is, <clears throat> you can use AI Relight to do some compositing work or color grading work. Um, here, for example, I have uh, this shot. And if you want to work on the faces, let's say they're, you want to simulate that they're watching something and the, the light affects uh, their faces and, and bodies. Um, what you can do is um, use AI Relight uh, with a simple one light set to white, and it gives you a mat of this direction. Then you can use that as a track mat and set it to Luma and uh, to an adjustment layer, uh, which we can use curves uh, on it to maybe simulate that they're, I don't know, watching something or you just want to darken those uh, those faces or a region of the, the scene. Um, so it's just to make you think about uh, the fact that you can use AI Relight also as a compositing tool um, to create a map of a 3D direction.
We will be working in the next uh, following months on uh, cool feature updates and model updates for this one. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy this uh, new product from Bascom. Cheers.